The House Speaker is in Singapore today, and while her official itinerary does not include Taiwan, there is growing speculation that she will visit Taipei as soon as tomorrow. Of course, that's not sitting well with Beijing because it views the independent nation as its territory. And China's foreign ministry spokesman is now making it abundantly clear there will be serious consequences if that visit goes ahead, saying this. We would like to once again warn the United States that we are fully prepared and solemnly waiting. The People's Liberation Army will never sit by idly. And if House Speaker Nancy Pelosi insists on visiting Taiwan, China will take resolute and strong measures to defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. As for what measures exactly we will take, let's wait and see if she dares making the visit. You know, David, I, I think about this. This visit has to happen, in my view. Um, this would be the first time in 25 years you've had a House Speaker visit, the biggest visit of a United States official going back to 1997. Mm. Um, it's important it happens, specifically because the verbal commitment was made, and we must show strength as the United States of America. Well, and, and you think of all the foreign policy debacles that we've had, starting with the Afghanistan withdrawal, mm -hmm. which was horrible, led to the death of U.S. servicemen and women. Uh, the Russia-Ukraine, we were talking before the show, I asked if you thought if, if a Trump had had a second term, if Russia would have invaded Ukraine. A lot of people think he wouldn't. I think you would agree with that, yep. that he wouldn't have, that, that Putin wouldn't have invaded because he was afraid. Weakness and mismanagement. I would also include the border crisis in those foreign policy because we're talking about foreigners coming in illegally to the, to the country. All of those problems have to do with weakness and mismanagement. And if we give in to the demands and the threats, quite frankly, the CCP right now, the Communist Party of China, uh, I mean, it's going to show them, going to give them a clue, another clue about our weakness and kind of give them a, a, a little push into, into Taiwan. I mean, it would, it would be disastrous if we did it, not only for Taiwan, which of course is, would be defenseless unless they had the help from the United States as, as an ally, uh, but for all of our problems around the world, it would just once again send a signal of weakness of this administration and of the United States in general. To that point, Cheryl, you and I were speaking before we went to air about economic strength against China, which is something that my former boss did. Uh, what do you assess the strength of the United States and the Biden administration economically? Well, I find it ironic that, first off, President Biden and the administration, they, they don't, obviously they don't want Pelosi to go, but <laughs> it's not on the official itinerary, to be clear, so we don't know that she will. But mm -hmm. if she does go, they've kind of, they, but he won't come out and tell her, frankly, don't do it. It's bad optics from, the, from China's side. And, and that, to me, is a, is a weakness of this president. The other issue here, though, is that the economic punch, that is much more of a threat to China than anything that we're going to discuss that would be a military threat to China. Why do I say that? Because right now you've got a company, Alibaba. It's one of the biggest billion, multi-billion dollar companies in the world. It's their Amazon in China. The New York Stock Exchange, the SEC, is threatening to delist Alibaba because they won't follow our auditing requirements in this country. Why does that matter? This is not boring. This is the pocketbooks of China and Xi Jinping that you're about to take a huge swipe at, and you could do it. It's the SEC that's doing it, not President Biden, not the administration, not Nancy Pelosi. So I just think that this president, again, to David's point about weakness, I think it's so important fortunate that we have the tools in our toolbox in this country to go after China, hit it where it hurts, money, not military money, and he won't do it. He won't stand up to China. And, and President Trump did that with tariffs and sanctions, and all of that is now off the table and not even being discussed. But yeah, sure, Nancy Pelosi, go ahead and go to Taiwan and make us look bad. Go yeah, right it's, ahead. A, it's a language that the Chinese understand, finances and money. Carly, I want to play a soundbite. Karine Jean-Pierre was asked what would happen if something were to take place, God forbid, yeah. since Nancy Pelosi's plane. Here's how she answered. An official who is associated with Chinese state media is suggesting that if Speaker Pelosi tries to go to Taiwan, her plane could be shot down. Does the president have a response to that? You know, I've been asked about, I know you're asking specifically about uh, uh, the rhetoric that we're hearing from China, but as it relates to uh, the speaker's, uh, the speaker's uh, travels, uh, it's something that we're just not going to speak to. Right now, that's a hypothetical. Well, it was a real threat. It wasn't a hypothetical threat. Yes, the action was hypothetical, but I think John Kirby had a much better answer. Listen to what he said this morning. This should have been the press secretary's answer. 
And we're going to make sure of that. Uh, th there's no reason for the Chinese rhetoric. There's no reason for uh, any actions to be taken. It is not uncommon for uh, congressional leaders to travel to Taiwan. We shouldn't be intimidated by, by that rhetoric uh, or, or those potential actions. This is an important trip for the speaker to be on, and we're going to do whatever we can to, to support her. That should have been the message from the get-go. Yeah, it absolutely should have. And apparently, uh, President Biden did not want Nancy Pelosi uh, to take this trip. The Department of Defense also advised against it, despite the fact that we pay billions in taxpayer dollars for the DOD to keep the United States the world's number one uh, superpower. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, because it's always better for the American people to have more information rather than less. But I hate that there's this reporting out there right now that Nancy Pelosi might be going to Taiwan. It reminds me of when we were reporting on the weapons that the United States might might be sending to Ukraine, giving Russia the chance to respond and retaliate. When it comes to lives and safety, can we get a little bit of secrecy here? There have been so many leaks in this story, and this is really serious, high-level stuff. You have Chinese officials now threatening to shoot down Nancy Pelosi's plane, which, by the way, could be a threat of a declaration of war. She's not a Navy SEAL. She's an 82-year-old lawmaker. She's trying to do the right thing. And now she's being put in this impossible situation. And Tom Cotton says that this initial leak came from the White House directly, possibly to try to dissuade Nancy Pelosi from making this trip. If that is true, then President Biden needs to absolutely be held accountable for, for this because it puts her, like I said, in this horrible situation, possibly puts her in danger. And if I were Nancy Pelosi, I'd be absolutely furious right now. That would be appalling. That's a really interesting thought um, by Senator Cotton. Kat, I just want to have a little bit of a flashback here. We were talking about Taiwan back in May because President Biden made this massive gaffe coming just two months before this moment. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's a commitment we made. Of course, the anonymous <laughs> White House staff had to creep out after and say he didn't mean that. Our policy of strategic ambiguity has not changed. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one, because as I saw this stuff coming out, that was the only thing that I was thinking about. And especially when you combine that with the fact that, of course, Nancy Pelosi is someone who's been sort of consistent on this kind of thing. I mean, even the 2008 Olympics, she was trying to push back, say, hey, we should know to this um, when it comes to, you know, that was in terms of Tibet. But... Uh, Biden administration does not want her going, as Cheryl brought up. That's something that we all know. And he even said as much last week. But whenever he makes any sort of comment on anything, which is something that we haven't really, I haven't really seen in recent history in terms of a president, we're kind of like, okay, well, is that really what he said? Did he really mean what he said? He says things and then everyone else sort of actually makes the decisions or says, oh, this is what he actually means. Because if you place that up against what he said last week, none of these things make sense together. And by the way, can I just say, this is not a difficult situation uh, to try and navigate. And we've been in this position before. Newt Gingrich, who made that trip in, in 1997, was on Fox and Friends earlier this morning and said that when he announced that he was going to go uh, to Taiwan, China once again absolutely freaked out. And yeah. then his national security advisor had a conversation with a Chinese ambassador and says, listen, China does not get to tell the American speaker where they can travel, period, end of sentence, end of story. That's exactly what should have happened here, and, and, and not this leaks and this back and forth, and is she, is she, is she not going to go? Yeah, I totally agree. It does feel, sadly, like the House Speaker is leading here, especially if she does go in a way the President is not. Right. Um, I wish there was just total and complete support, like Kirby's suggesting there is. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.